Very good morning to all of you. This is Khanna, this is Bindal, this is Devakar, this is Manoj Mishra, so many of my colleagues. Uh, let me first say the one of the most important aspects of any of these conferences is uh, the interaction which takes place amongst us to think of various methodologies. And I'm delighted to see so many of familiar faces, people who I've worked with, and uh, I am looking forward to their contribution, their participation, their views, rather than expressing any elaborate views of my own. Um, this uh, concept of regional conferences started almost six, seven years ago. The idea was that in a very, very large composite conference, uh, it becomes difficult at time to identify in each uh, region of our country has some element of its own peculiarities, some elements of its own problems, and possibly uh, some kind of similarities in that area. So it's a more effective interaction which has uh, resulted in these regional conferences, of course, with the national conference in a year. Uh, the broad parameters on which a justice system is evaluated are availability of justice, accessibility of justice, and its deliverability. If I may say so, the equality of opportunity for justice is the base. Uh, we, have, we, have, we are a vast country with large population of socially and economically underprivileged. How do you create a balance between the two to work out their uh, justice system? If the representation uh, which they are able to obtain is very vastly different, then uh, you can't say they are on the same platform. One of my great concerns, uh, which was mentioned, has been uh, the issue of uh, people who are under trials, looking for bail, uh, cases to be considered for remission, whether they can be dealt with in plea bargaining. Because while a prosecution system needs to be strengthened, always I feel, because so there is effective prosecution, the defense system should also be equally strengthened so that they provide an equal opportunity. And the NALSA's view is to provide the best of legal assistance to people who are not otherwise able to afford it. And that's, I think, one singular part of the focus which must be maintained. Um, a reference was made uh, earlier both by just Khanna and just Bindal to the presidential address of uh, the President of India, a lady she was speaking on uh, the Law Day. And after finishing her opening speech, she broke into what was her own experience, how she visited jails, how see the problem. Uh, we have a huge under trial prisoners. Is it that we think that we cannot convict people, so let us punish them by keeping them in prison during that period of time? This unfortunately seems to be a philosophy, I must say, which, which permeates. We think he must have done this because he is charged. Because he must have done it, we must keep him behind bars. And because we do not know whether we will be able to convict him or not, let us keep him behind bar for the longest time. Somewhere this uh, philosophy must be uh, jettisoned. The whole purpose, leave aside, I think, murder cases, extremely heinous cases. I have not understood if the, what is the purpose of custodial interrogation or keeping him in custody beyond the period of charge sheet being filed. And this is something which we come across the, in the Supreme Court also. When I joined the Supreme Court, some of my colleagues used to say, let us not make the Supreme Court of India into a bail court. And I thought that's correct, you know, we should be considering more serious issues. But that's a very important aspect of, of personal freedom. So before coming here, I tried to, at least in my personal way, to see how many cases am I interfering with where bail matters are coming before the Supreme Court. The figure was more than 33%. That is mean after it has been through a scrutiny by the district level, by the high court level, still the Supreme Court has to step in for purposes of bail in more than one third cases. This is something for introspection I am only saying. Where is that um, we are not able to at the relevant levels deal with it? Why should the Supreme Court be burdened with every day, um, every bench having uh, anything from 5 to 10 bail matters coming, a bail, anticipatory bail? Um, Therefore, it's an introspection and a rethought process for which the Supreme Court at various times has commented, um, trying to give some guidance for this purpose. 
The problem is, of course, more aggravated in some states, less aggravated in some of the other states. Um, in this uh, beautiful town of Varanasi, we are there. Uh, UP faces a great challenge. It's a great challenge because of the number of cases. And each state has its own peculiarity on this criminal justice system problems. So, UP, Bihar, uh, even Maharashtra, some of the states have a greater problem because of the pendency issue. Uh, when I compare uh, it uh, with, uh, in 2017, I left the Madras High Court. Murder appeals of 2016 were being heard. It's a large court. Is there something they do differently? That's why I say learning from each other's experience. Are they doing something differently? Is it some of the smaller states? Of course, it is easier. Somewhere the 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 uh, the criminal justice system is far more burdened. Similarly, there are issues of say pendency of cases. Uh, when I went from Punjab Haryana, in terms of more than five years cases, Punjab Haryana had an extremely good number. It was. Uh, less than 5%. I don't know what the current figure would be. So very manageable uh, figures. Same number of, broadly the same number of judges, same number of volume of litigation and filing, same number of subordinate judiciary, similarity of figures between Punjab Haryana and Tamil Nadu. The figure was 24% in Tamil Nadu. So why I'm trying to only give this example is that there are things happening in some states differently. Is it helping? So learn from us. Is there something happening which we can improve? That's again a learning process. And I think the first session uh, which will be opened will be very important for this. Um, when we talk about uh, increase of number of cases, uh, criminal cases, civil cases, let's understand one important factor is that the awareness of rights have also grown. It's a positive aspect. Um, Women are asserting their rights, socially underprivileged are asserting their rights. That also creates litigation, but that's, I think, a healthy part of litigation which is necessary for evolving a society. Now, we have to see that we take the help to the doorsteps, something this is Kanna also mentioned. So, one is somebody approaching us and saying, look, I need help. The other is to get to them, to make them aware of their rights and give them help where required. And I think the Legal Service Authority in the last few years has done a, a, a great job of trying to take it at the doorsteps. Different ways, use of technology, how to keep and monitor data, how to see to access people, how to solve their very, very small problems at times. Um, I, one interesting uh, methodology I used to, I found when I was in Punjab, Haryana was that uh, at times of uh, religious celebrations, the Legal Service Authority would open a um, clinic outside. And there would be normal day of life small problems, whether it's getting a ration card, whether it's getting a Aadhaar card, whether it's some other small problem. But for the common man, that is important. It's not litigation in the true sense. But that's also part of the job which the Legal Service Authority does. And I think that does it fairly well in its methodology of doing so. So how do you carry that forward as people's aspiration goes, as the problems increase? How to get it at that level where people are uh, able to access and... Uh, uh, find a methodology to solutions. Because we we still have a very bureaucratic system. Uh, small things get tied up in many rules and regulations and we are very reticent to change those uh, complicated rules and regulations. Every every form will run into some uh, uh, ten, 10 paragraphs to be filled in for uh, how to do it. On a little uh, diversion on a lighter side, uh, I, gave you an, I can give you an example. So something like, um, I, I was once in uh, uh, England and had, had a carry-forward note of a pound which had gone out of circulation. The 50-pound note, I thought it's valuable money to see if I can change it. So somebody told me uh, there, is a, there are banks designated where you can go and change. So I went there and uh, so he, I handed him over the note. He said, you want to change it? He looked at it, tore it and gave me a new note. So I said, uh, how do I sign which form? He says, go. That's how that is to be done. Look at the parameter in India. If a note had to be exchanged properly, we would have to handle a two-page form <laughs> before that can be taken up. This is responsiveness of administration to people which is required. And we don't have this responsiveness. So somewhere the judiciary in a, in a, a non-adversarial uh, fashion of adjudication of disputes steps in. And I think the Legal Service Authority does a very important role in it. 
in trying to bridge this gap also, apart from providing um, legal help. <coughs> Cases of bail and remission, I think some, some kind of a revolution is required if we have to change things. Otherwise, we keep talking, it'll take us 300 years to finish these cases, 500 years. Today, somebody says 700 years. I, I really don't believe this is what is required. Uh, we've been trying to suggest to the government, uh, not very successfully, I think, so far, that on this 75 years of uh, celebration of the independence of the country, some out-of-the-box thinking is necessary. And uh, I had an occasion to comment on it judicially to say that this out-of-the-box thinking can be, let's segregate the heinous crimes, okay, whatever you may say, seven years or ten years, let's get, keep a benchmark. And uh, if it is less than that, single offense cases, person has already served, say, one third of the sentence. Then what Justice Khanna says, maybe under the Probation of the Offenders Act or something, just take a bound and release him. Why do you want to make him go through trial in first year trial, second year uh, appeal, third, and then land up, uh, the state landing up in Supreme Court in every case? This is one of the problems. So that the courts are also a little free to deal with the more heinous crime cases and concentrate on them. The, they become the most prolonged and the equitable rate is also high. So yesterday I was talking to one of my brothers from the state and for dinner and just asked how many, what would be in criminal appeals uh, you would find as your acquittals, where's, where conviction would have been done by the, the district court. He says 75%. Is it that 75% cases we are just convicting because we want to convict them at the district court level? We say the prosecution is, is not good, is poor. But that's not our job. It's not our job to prosecute. It is not the judge's job to prosecute. It is not the legal service authority to prosecute. There is a prosecution section separately. If that doesn't do its job, we don't do, step in and do their job. So uh, how do you explain to somebody, whether it's absence of prosecution or absence of evidence, that after 10 years he's going to be released uh, without, uh, without his being ultimately found uh, guilty of what he is charged with. So these are aspects, I think, uh, which need, uh, need some, some debate. Uh, mediation was mentioned. I, I'm a great believer in solving. I feel if you want every case to be tried, it will never happen. Nowhere in the world it happens. Nowhere in the world we face so many cases. Um, uh, on some opportunity to see how the U.S. system works. California has a huge amount of litigation. 3% cases go to trial. We take 99.9% .9 cases to trial. And if mediation has worked, let us acknowledge it has not worked all over the country. It has worked in certain areas. Well, it has not worked in some of the business states, I would say, which are high on business activity, where I think it should be a great way forward. And judges must step in. Judges must step in to encourage mediation. They must play a hands-on role. From Gujarat, one of the trainer, one of the oldest persons of mediation used to come, and only thing would tell us, I wish my judges would also equally step in and, and give the impetus to mediation. And for that, I do believe we are trying to work out because uh, I, I also helped the mediation uh, committee of the Supreme Court. There is no harm or a positive approach if judges also go through a referral training program. Some of the states have organized. We are trying to organize for all over the country now. Uh, whoever is willing, we can't force anybody to go through it. But go through a mediation training program. When some of us in Delhi took part in mediation, we sat through the whole training. I have personally gone through basic training two, three times over, advanced training two, three times over. I assure you, apart from whatever I may understand of a referral, I think it in my own mind, it helped me understand the litigation better. It helped me understand the, the nuances of certain areas better of how a litigant at times is not happy because his lawyer is not able to translate what he wants to say into the court. So these are all methods by which we can sort out these problems. Otherwise, if we think that all this litigation pending must go through every trial stage, must go through every appeal stage, and must be heard at, at uh, the Supreme Court because the state has this great privilege and unending amount of financial ability to reach the highest court, then certainly these 500, 700 years talk will arise. The Legal Service Authority has a very important role, I think, in steering the system in this area. Try to see how to resolve these issues so that we can reduce the burdens of the court. 
and uh, what has been said is uh, the amount of effort made. Why, why, for God's sake, why should on an issue of remission matters keep pending? Why do uh, courts don't push for the states to take a call, having different norms for remission? And how many cases the remission is being done where the appeal is yet to be heard because the time period is over? So we've let the whole time period of sentence go by without even advancing the person on bail. I mean, on a thumb rule, we said if somebody, even in a murder case, has for 10 years been in prison and the high court is not able to appeal, hear the appeal. It's not a, it's a single incident case. I don't think there's anything to be done. He has to be granted bail. There is no other way. Why do we need to spend so much of time on it, on, on these thought processes? If we work out in our mind certain parameters, we have to, in these volumes, work out certain parameters so that we can uh, help out and as judges help out the legal service authority also in this picture in trying to do so. That link is provided by the legal service authority. We have tried to uh, step across in judicial sense and I, I let me say some of the people in the Supreme Court Legal Service Committee have done a wonderful job of coordinating with the states, trying to see how uh, a centralized system can be there, how all these aspects can be tackled. But at a, at a more local relevant level, it's the high courts will have to do it. And from the high court, it goes to the district court. District courts will take a cue from all of you. All of you, what you tell them and do so. And this requires a repetitive, uh, uh, you know, sometimes interaction with the subordinate judiciary. Um, uh, one of the things, uh, let me say again, which was uh, uh, flagged by Chief Justice Bindal was, there are cases coming where people are undergoing sentence because they're not able to pay the fine element also. So somebody may have gone through years of sentence, but that 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 rupees he's unable to afford. Invariably, if he's in custody for such a long period of time, the family has half the time leaves them. That's the role that comes in. Can we look to the legal side of authority, debate it? Can this fine element be taken care of where a person cannot afford it? Some method to get the person out at these levels. These are again some thought processes um, which will have to be debated. Um, there are uh, concepts of, uh, of new facets of uh, legal service institution and aid which have come up. Legal aid clinics at different places are being taken place. Uh, we have to be also conscious that there are some, some states as I now travel and this is really my opening of the innings on these issues of various of the legal service authority. I had an opportunity to say travel to Nagaland. Now, the traditional methods of resolution of disputes are very much prevalent. And uh, I said, look, we are not here to replace your traditional methods. We are here to facilitate with your traditional methods a resolution of the disputes, which was something uh, which is appreciated. So we have to create an amalgam, amalgam of what the constitution and the law we have laid down, take uh, local uh, issues, local sentiments, local methodologies into this thing, which are sometimes good process of mediation, sometimes in serious cases, not a good process of mediation. Try to provide the distinction between the two. Uh, legal aid clinics in, in institutions, educational institutions. So we, we opened uh, in, a, in a college, a legal uh, aid service clinic where people would assist and be educated and uh, also a center would be available. These are uh, all illustrations of, I would say, uh, the system thinking a little out of the box how to help to the people who, who need it. Um, we have uh, endeavored um, on this under trial review communities to provide uh, procedures and guidelines for them, uh, campaign or release uh, and the large number of figures which uh, has already been mentioned in the earlier speeches uh, was done and uh, the national grid data was made available. I don't want to repeat on that aspect. Um, there has to be I think adaptation, upgradation and enhancement, whether in the nature of facilities we give, whether in the mediation process we give, we have to adapt solutions which maybe other countries may have thought of, but in our local environment, in our local um, requirements which are there. We keep, uh, keep talking about uh, sometimes panchayat, how panchayats used to resolve. Yes, panchayat resolve certain things, but it's not mediation to my mind. Because that has uh, a diktat to it. If a punch says something, that's a, it's an informal diktat. A voluntary mediation is something where the parties arrive at a solution. 
and that's why it's a more modern concept and worth worth exploring it. Um, there's there is a digital boom which has taken place. Legal Service Authority has equally incorporated and helped out with it. One of the sessions is devoted to discussing this this aspect. Um, there are upgradation of records of cases, etc. Done NALSA's mobile apps, uh, Vidhi charts. Both are path making developments, and that's how it should go on. And all of you, I think, can assist us in in paving the way towards these uh, new thought processes. Um, any constitutional right requires free legal aid, uh, more so in a state which has such a large section of underprivileged population. Uh, to develop a trust factor between the legal aid seekers and beneficiaries with the legal services institution, it is uh, important that the achievements of legal service institutions of rendering legal aid, referral, disposal of cases, mediation, local dialogue, are put in the public forum so people know that they have faith in getting their issues resolved through this process. I would only say, please come up with solutions. Please suggest methodologies. The discussions are not only to repeat what we may have achieved uh, um, or, or something in that direction and make a record of it, but look to your guidance, your thought processes, your innovativeness in trying to help us out with what we are trying to do. I look forward to all your debates and thank you all for joining us and look forward to your interaction with you. Thank you very much. <laughs>